Hello students, welcome back to this session. In this session, we are going to take up the topic which we started last time around and we are going to continue it further. That is biasing the MOSFET devices. If you remember last time we did biasing the depletion MOSFETs, this time we will continue it further and see how to bias the enhancement MOSFETs. So, the learning outcome of this particular session is going to be upon successful completion of this session, the students will be able to design biasing circuits for the MOSFETs. So, what is the summary that we had from the previous session? And just a bit, a bit of a recap, we started the previous session by seeing the construction and operation of the depletion MOSFETs. After that, we studied both the output as well as transfer characteristics of the depletion MOSFETs. We saw the difference between JFETs and MOSFETs and we did start doing the techniques, but for biasing only for depletion MOSFETs. So, continuing further, just like we had it in case of depletion MOSFETs, here also we have two types of biasing for enhancement MOSFET. There the first one was called as self bias, here we are going to call it as a feedback bias. You can see the difference here what is happening. So, primarily here the difference is going to be the way in which you are going to connect the supply to the gate terminal of the MOSFET. Just like in the previous case, you are going to give the small signal to the input of this coupled through capacitor as we already discussed. Similarly, you take the output from the drain terminal wherein we couple it again through a capacitance. So, essentially feedback pass would mean I am not giving a separate voltage source here as I was doing in case of a depletion MOSFET. Here what I am doing is, I am using the voltage source which I have here and I am feeding it back to the input through this resistor which I call as a feedback resistor or a gate resistor called RG. So, this would be the overall circuit. If you look at the DC equivalent circuit, what is the DC equivalent circuit? We have already seen the capacitor is going to block any DC which comes in. So, any of the DC component would not be there, we only have the DC components here. So, this is the circuit which is going to be for the feedback bias circuit. Now, what does feedback bias mean or what does biasing in general mean? Biasing would again mean we have to find out an appropriate operating point or what we call as a Q point. Essentially, Q point is again your VDS comma I D or V D S Q comma I D Q. Now, to see further how we can do this, we are going to up follow a different approach this time around, wherein we use what we call as a load line method or a DC load line way of finding the bias point. To do that, we are going to start by writing some Kirchhoff's voltage law for the circuit. Now, in this case, let us see, I have to, I have to find the equation for VGS. So, I can apply my KVL for this input loop starting from VDD, RDRD, then RG, finally VGS and then I take it to ground. This I call as input loop while from VDD through RDID and VDS, I call this as the output loop. So, how can we write the equations for the input loop? If you can see here, the KVL would mean VDD minus I D times R D okay, then minus I G times R G which is a drop across this, then minus V G S would be equal to 0. So, in this case what is the gate current? Now, as we already seen in case of MOSFETs the gate current is very negligible. In fact, we can even treat it as 0 because it is an order of few pico amperes. So, milli amperes and pico amperes you can see you can ignore the pico amperes that is gate current. So, if you take I j as 0 here, we can write the final equation as V d d minus I d R d minus V g s is equal to 0. Okay. So, this equation is demonstrating the relation between the input gate voltage V g s and the output current I d. 
this is what we want in any transfer characteristics VGS versus ID. So, talking of transfer characteristics, let us go to the next slide now and see how we can write this transfer characteristics. Okay. So, moving on, this is the one, this is what we call as the transfer characteristics, right. Why transfer? Because input gate voltage versus output drain current. Now, moving on, I will rewrite the equation that we had got last time. What is the equation that we had got? We said V d d minus I d times R d minus V g s is equal to 0. Now, what is the significance of this d c equation? Now, using this equation, we can draw what we call as a d c load line. Now, if we superimpose the transfer characteristics upon the d c load line, wherever these two curves intersect, that point is called as the operating point. Why operating point? I will just give an example. This transfer curve is a curve for V g s versus I d. That means what? These can be the possible values of I d for these values of V g. But then the D c equation says V d d minus I d R d minus V g s equal to 0. So, can we draw a D c load line? Yes. Now, this is a relationship between V g s and I d. Now, can we draw this curve? Now, what does this curve mean? Let me find out what happens if I make V g s equal to 0 here. If I make V g s equal to 0, this equation reduces to V d d minus I d R d is equal to 0 or I can solve for I d and I can write R d as V d d upon R d. So, what does this basically tell me? This tells me whenever V g s is 0, my current is V d d upon R d. Now, can I put this point back onto the curve? Let us see that. In this graph, V g s equal to 0 means I would be here. Now, for V g s equal to 0, what is I d? It is going to be V d d upon R d. So, I have got this coordinate now. Now, can I find another coordinate this time on the x axis? Now, what happens on the x axis? For any point on the x axis, I d is 0. So, let us go back to this equation here and put I d is equal to 0. What happens? If you make I d equal to 0 here, then what is going to happen? We are going to be left with an expression which says V d d minus V g s is equal to 0. So, essentially what does that translate to? V g s is equal to V d d. So, when V g s is equal to V d d, I d is 0. So, that is the point I have over here. So, using this equation, I can get at least two points which satisfy this equation. Now, since this equation is a linear equation, if I join these two points and this entire line from this point to this point is going to represent my equation V d d minus I d R d minus V g s is equal to 0. This we call as the D c load line. That means what? If at all we have to find out any value of I d for any given value of V g s, it is only possible on this line. But my transfer curve tells me that I d is only possible on this line. That means what? What is that point which satisfies both these equations? If you remember, what is this curve equation given by? This curve is given by what? I d is equal to I d is equal to I d s s v 1 minus V g s by V p whole square. So, this being the case, there is only one point here which satisfies both the square law characteristics of the MOSFET and the DC load line. This we call as the operating point. So, this is how we can graphically also represent the operating point for any bias circuit. How do we do this? Use the Kirchhoff's voltage law, write the equations, draw the DC load line, superimpose on the transfer characteristics, whatever is the operating point that gives me your Q point. But if you go back and say, what did we say? We kept on saying, okay, operating point means V d s comma I d. Once you find V g s, you can always find V d s by writing one more Kirchhoff's voltage law, this time for the output loop. Now, all this can be understood very well if we take an example 
and try to find out what is the operating point. For which now we will move on to an example, a solved example wherein which will guide you through a step by step process as to how to find the operating point. Okay. So, let us do that. Okay. So, let us take an example now. Uh, let us move to the board and try to draw the circuit. So, first I will just draw the feedback bias configuration circuit. So, this is going to be the VDD, we have the RD. Remember, this is an enhancement MOSFET. So, your drain and source will not be directly connected, there will be a dotted line which simply says that this is a enhancement MOSFET. I am going to come, I am going to short the substrate and the source, so that you are going to have only a three terminal device. And then, wherever there is a gate, I am going to use what we call as a gate feedback resistance. What does feedback mean? I am going to take from the drain one more resistor. Okay, this was RD, this I am called as RG okay, and I am connecting it back to the gate and this of course, I am going to ground. So, this essentially is my feedback bias for a enhancement MOSFET device. So, just to name the terminals, this is the drain, this is the source and this is the gate. What are the currents then? The currents are your I D and this of course, is your plus V D D. Now, how to find out the Q point? Let us take an example. So, this is a circuit given. So, the question says, this is a circuit for an enhancement MOSFET. Now, the threshold voltage for the MOSFET is given as 2 volts. That means, what? The threshold voltage for the MOSFET is given by what? V T and it is given as 2 volts. And then, the I D on or what we call as it on drain current is given as 6 milli amperes. So, I D on is given as 6 milli ampere. So, what are the other data that are given? This I D on is for a given V G S on of 5 volt. So, this I D on is for a certain V G S on of 5 volts. Okay. So, the question that has been asked is given this circuit, given these initial values plus given the values of the drain resistors as 1 kilo ohm and the gate resistance as 1 mega ohm. Can we find I D? Can we find V D S? Okay. So, that is a challenge that has been asked for you. So, let us start then approaching it by a step by step procedure wherein we will write the Kirchhoff's voltage law for the output circuit plus we will also write the Kirchhoff's voltage law for the input circuit and let us see whether it eventually leads us to finding the values of I D and V D S. So, what is the saturation equation for an enhancement MOSFET? The saturation equation for enhancement MOSFET is given as this equation I D is equal to K times V G S minus V T whole square. Now, what is this K? Now, this K is called as the device transconductance. Okay. So, what does device transconductance mean? If we were to split this further, this K is actually given by the process transconductance okay, and the width and length of this particular device. Okay. And this process transconductance is basically nothing but the product of mobility of the n type enhancement MOSFET and multiplied by the oxide capacitance per unit area. So, we do not have to go too deep into trying to find the individual parameters, all we have to do is try to find the value of k. Now, how to find the value of k? I have been given a sample value for I D S on for a certain V G S on and V T is also given. So, if V T is known, I D on is known, V G S is known, can you not put all that over here and then solve for k. Okay. So, this way we are going to find what is the device transconductance for this example. So, if you go on, if you substitute everything, k will be I D divided by V G S minus V T whole square. Just substituting the values, the value of k that we are going to get is 0.67, okay. we have to use the calculator to do this, 0.67 milli ampere per whole square. 
I am avoiding the calculations here, I am very sure that you can do the back end calculations, I am straight away giving you the answers for these problems while telling you the steps how you can go there. So, the unit of transconductance is ampere per volt square, milli would simply mean 10 raise to minus 3. So, now that you know k, how is it that you can find out the value of I d? To know the value of I d, let us start slowly applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, Kirchhoff's voltage law can be applied initially we will apply it for the input loop. So, what all does the input loop have? V d d, I d r d, I g r g, I have not written the current I g r g, okay. this is I g r g, this I write it as I g, I g r g, then this would be your which drop between g and s. right? So, this is going to be your V g s. So, if I can write a k v l, so that would say V d d minus the first drop that I have here which is I d times R d minus the second drop that I have here which is I g times R g okay? and finally, the last drop which is V g s minus V g s is going to be equal to 0. Now, as we already seen, now I g is negligible. So, we can straight away ignore this particular term and we can write this particular equation. So, what else can we possibly write here? So, can we not solve now for V g s? Because even I d is unknown, V g s is unknown, this term is evaluating to 0. So, I will rewrite this entire expression and solve for V g s okay? or I would, I, would, I, would, I would take another approach and let us see that. Okay? So, V g s would be, okay? so this goes on that side, what is left of now? V d d minus I d times R d. Now, what is V d d? V d d is given in the example as 15 volts. Okay, we forgot to write that. So, V d d is given as 15 volts. So, this is essentially we going to equal to 15 minus I d times R d. Now, I do not know how much is I d, right? so unknown, but what is R d? R d is 1 k. Now, 1 k is nothing but 1000. So, you can simply write this as 15 minus 1000 times I d. Okay? So, by doing this, I now have one equation wherein I am able to express V g s in terms of I d. Now, let us go back to our current equation or the square law equation that we have and this is another equation which gives me I d. Okay. So, wherever there is V g s cannot replace V g s by this particular equation. Yes or no? Right? So, I d would be k times wherever there is V g s I will write 15 minus 1000 I d minus V t whole square. So, V t is known to me okay? and k is also calculated as 0 0.67 milli ampere per volt square. So, eventually I am going to get a quadratic equation for I d by solving which we are able to get an answer for I d which happens to be again I am skipping the steps here, it is more of a math that is involved, it gives 9.3 milli ampere. Just to recap a bit here, what did I do? My job was I had to find out I d. I wrote a KVL equation on the input loop. I assumed I g to be 0 and then tried to express V g s in terms of I d. Once I could express V g s in terms of I d, I went back to my original Shockley equation. In this, wherever there is V g s, I wrote this expression 15 minus 1000 I d. I know the value of k, I know the value of V t. So, it becomes simply one unknown equation, though of course, a quadratic term, you just take the positive answer for the I d and you end up getting the value of I d as 9.3. This is essentially your I d q, the Q question point, but the Q question point also requires you to find out the V g s as well as the uh, V d s q. So, what would that be? Can you now calculate that? So, let us quickly go there and see what are going to be the answers for this particular solution. Now, V g s is already known to us, why not write the equation for K v l for the output circuit. Now, what is the output circuit? V d d minus I d R d minus V d s equal to 0. So, I already know I d, I already know R d, the only unknown for me is V d s. So, I can simply go ahead and put that value of V d s and my Q point is through. So, I will write that equation here. So, writing the K v l for this. So, what would that particular equation be? 
just like I wrote the equation for input loop, I will now write the equation for output loop. So, this one would be V d d minus the same drop I d R d minus the last drop which we have here which is V d s and that you can equate it to 0. So, what I do now? Just solve for V d s. So, therefore, I can say V d s is nothing but it goes on this side, you will be left with V d d minus I d times R d. Now, is it possible to solve it? Yes. Why? V d d is known 15 volts, I d has just now been calculated as 9.3 milli amperes and R d is also given as 1 k. So, putting in all these values, this evaluates to 5.3 7 volt, which is essentially nothing but your V d s q. So, your final q point is going to be, we usually write the final answer for any such biasing problem as V, I will just rub this part here, so that it will highlight what the overall answer is. So, the overall answer for me, the expectation is, I have to write the q point as what? V d s q comma i d q, which happens to be my 5.7 volt here comma my 9.3 milli amperes. So, this is what was the expectation. Given a circuit, find its q point, which is nothing but finding i d as well as v d s. Each of these circuits have a slightly different way in which you can solve it. Okay. In, a, in this case, we try to solve I d by using two sets of equation. One set of equation was I d and other set of equation was the k well at input loop. While once we found out I d, finding out V d s was very easy by simply applying the k well for the output loop. So, this was in just how we do the biasing using the feedback bias technique for enhancement MOSFET. Again, just as in the case of depletion MOSFET, this type of feedback technique is prone to variation in the q point because of variations in the process as you already see if k varies uh, i mean everything starts varying k is a process this part is a process already said mu n and c ox if your mu n changes your c ox changes then your current starts changing it also changes with change in temperature so how can i make my q point more stable again the solution to that is what we call as a voltage divider bias network Okay. So, let us move on to the next one and see how this voltage divider bias network is done in case of a enhancement MOSFET. So, let us let us go back there and see. Okay. Yeah, so that that is the right slide. Okay. Uh, again, we are showing two sets of circuits here, the one which has the AC input signal applied another one which simply shows the DC equivalent circuit, okay, which, which does not have any AC component over there. Okay. So, the circuit again is very similar to how it was done for enhancement MOS, uh, sorry for depletion MOSFET. So, the only change you can possibly see in this entire circuit is the symbol for this enhancement MOSFET. Okay. Instead of a straight line, it is now a dotted line which shows that the channel does not exist at Vj is equal to 0, it only is enhanced after Vgs becomes larger than the threshold voltage Vt. So, again now this entire thing can be strengthened if we follow an example for this bias circuit. So, let us rub this thing now what we have here and then move on to the next example which illustrates how to do the biasing of Q point in case of voltage divider networks. Okay. So, it is going to be the same circuit that we have here. Okay. So, but let us draw that so that it will help us to write the equations as we proceed. So, we are going to start with a drain resistance followed by the enhancement MOSFET, end type arrow mark inside, substrate shorted to source okay. and then we have the source resistance and then we have the gate which is connected through two more resistors which are R 1 and R 2 and this entire thing is grounded. Okay. So, this goes to V d d. Okay. Now, just going to name them as R d and R s 
this we are going to call it as R 1 and R 2. Now, the design problem again here is going to be they have given us the values of these resistors, we have to find the Q point. So, the values of the resistors given in the example are R d as 2 k okay, and R s as 0.5 k. Now, how much is 0.5 k? 0.5 k is nothing but 500 ohms. Okay. Then R 2 is given as 15 mega ohm and R 1 is given as 20 mega ohm. Now, can we draw the currents in this particular network? Okay, so, what are the currents then? The current that flows through this R D is called as I D okay? and the current that goes into the gate we call it as I G which of course, is 0 and we are going to make it as 0 as we do the so many calculations and since I G is 0 whatever is the drain current is also nothing but your source current. So, even here also we are going to have the same current I D which is equal to I S. Okay? And then what are the terminals here? This is a drain, this is a source and this is a gate. Now, how do we show the potentials now? The potentials are between drain and source we have what we call as V D S okay? and between gate and source we have what is called as V G S. Eventually, we have to find out what is I D and what is V D S, but along the way we will also go and find out how much is V G S. Now, is there any other data that is given for this particular example? Okay. So, let us see what is the example that is given. So, in the figure it says it is a voltage divider configuration. The threshold voltage at which the MOSFET turns on is given as 4 volts. So, V t is given as 4 volts. Okay. The value of I d on for a certain V g s on. Okay which we had the last time also around, the value of E d on is given as 6 milli amperes and what is the V g s on that is given? The V g s on is given as 8 volts. That means what? For a V g s of 8 volts, I am going to have an I d of 6 milli amperes. So, that is the data that is given. Now, what they are asking us this time is do not apply the equations. Can you solve this using the graphical method. Okay. It is much much easier actually, I mean it is a very simple task, all you need is a graph sheet. Here we want to try to make a graph out of this board and see how best we can solve this particular thing. So, I had to find out what is I d, I had to find out what is V d s, I had to find out what is V g s using graphical method. So, for a graphical method as you have already seen, what we do is what we call as a DC load line method. right? So, in a DC load line what do we do? We have the transfer characteristics, what is the transfer characteristics? It is V g s versus I d. Now, on this transfer characteristics, we go and plot what we call as a DC load line and wherever these two intersect, that point we call it as a Q point. Now, initially since I d on is given, V g s on is given, V t is given, let us find out the value of k, just like in previous example. So, how is this calculated as? We have the equation as I d is equal to k times V g s minus V t whole square. right? So, I d is known 6 milli, V g s is known 8 volts, V t is known 4 volts. So, solving that we can write the value of k, again I will not do the calculation directly, I will give the answer, it comes out to 0.375 milli ampere per volt square. So, this is essentially the value of device transconductance. Now, can I use this value to plot the transfer curve? What is the transfer curve? I will just straight away draw that curve over here. So, transfer curve is nothing but your V g s versus I d. So, what is the equation then? The equation which governs this transfer curve is I d is equal to k V g s minus V t whole square. Now, graphical method means I now have to go and plot this particular graph. How to plot? Value of k is known, value of V t is known. So, what I will start doing? Initially, I will put V g s equal to 0. So, if V g s is 0, what will be I d? 
R d is going to be 0, right? Because it, you cannot apply this particular equation. In fact, to be on the precise, to be precisely, this is the equation when it is conducting. So, as long as V j s is less than V t, there will not be any current. So, till your V j s becomes equal to V t, which happens to be around 4 volts, right? So, we have, let us say we call this as 0, let us call this as 5, let us call this as 10, 15 and 20. Now, you have to use a graph sheet to do this. I am going to use this whiteboard and try to mark it as symmetrically as possible, but I do suggest you use a graph sheet to do this, because it is a graphical analysis that we are doing. So, till V j s equal to 4 volts, which is here, I am not going to have any gate current whatsoever. Okay? So, my current starts flowing only when it becomes greater. So, let me put V j s equal to 5 in this equation, find the value of I d. Okay? So, if I keep V j s equal to 5, I d is can be calculated using this equation. I will I'll try to plot the curve on this side also. Let us try to mark these lines okay, in terms of milli amperes. Right? This is going to be in terms of milli amperes. I am going to use the margin of, uh, I mean the box or max as 6 milli amperes, 12 milli amperes, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42 and so on. So, basically it is a uh, multiples of 6 I am trying to do, 6, 12, so on. So, if you put uh, VGS as 5 volts, you can calculate I d, it comes out to around 0.375 milli amperes. So, it is very, very less. Okay? So, that point would be somewhere here. Next, put VGS as 7.5, calculate the value of I d. So, for VGS of 7.5, you get the value of I d as 4.59 milli amperes. Right? So, for 7.5, you want to get 4.59 milli amperes. Likewise, go ahead, put the value of V j s as 10, find what is I d. So, I d in that case comes out to 13.5. As you can see here, it rises exponentially because it is following an exponential or square law here. So, 13 would be somewhere over here. right? Next one, 12.5, 15, 20, you can go on, it comes to and you can join these curves you will get up a curve like this. Okay? Essentially, the intention is we have to go on finding it for 10, for 12.5, for 15 and so on. So, by doing this, we have now plotted the transfer curve. Once the transfer curve is plotted, what is going to be the next task that we have in hand? We have to now draw what we call as the DC load line. What is the DC load line? It is going to be a line which intersects this x and y axis, cutting this transfer curve at some point. Wherever it cuts the transfer curve, that becomes my Q point. So, how to find the DC load line? Start writing the equations for the output loop as well as for the input loop for this particular case. So, where does it come as far as this is concerned? Now, initially let us start by saying what is VGS? VGS is nothing but this voltage here called VG. V j is a node voltage. Okay? So, I can write V j s as V g minus V s. I will just rub this portion here that will give us more space to write the equations. Okay? I am going to write V g s as V g minus V s. Now, what is V s? V s is nothing but the voltage at the source terminal of this enhancement MOSFET. Now, since gate current is 0, I d is always equal to the source current. We can call straight away I s as I d. Now, start writing the equation for I d. Now, what is I d given by? If I can call this as V s, what is V s? The voltage between this point and ground, which is nothing but the drop across the resistance R s. So, V s is the drop across R s. So, can I not write V s as I d times R s? Okay. If I can write V s as I d time R s, this value of V s I can put it here. Okay. If I put this value of this here, eventually what will be my equation for V j s as? My equation for V j s happens to be V j s is going to be V g minus I d times R s. Okay. Very simple approach. We simply started by saying what is V g s? V j s is V g minus V s. And then we said what is V s? V s is the voltage drop across the source resistance. 
So, that we said is nothing but I d into R s. Why I d into R s? Because I d is same as I s. Then finally, V j s is V g minus I d time R s. This is one of the equations and which we are going to use it later. So, what is R s? Is 0.5 k which I am going to write it as 500 ohms. So, I can I can rewrite this equation and I can say it as V g minus 500 times I d. Okay. So, this becomes you can say my equation number 1. Why I am writing equation 1? I will come back to this particular equation and I will use this. Now, let us try to find out what this V g is all about. right? Now, the, now the thorn in our flesh or the sore point error equation is I do not know what is this V g. So, can I not find out V g from this circuit in some way? If you remember in the previous example, what is V g? V g is nothing but the voltage across R 2. And what is this R 1 and R 2? It is a series combination of two resistors. If we ignore I g as 0, then it is as good as a voltage drop across two series connected resistors. So, cannot apply that series voltage rule or voltage divider rule. So, voltage across R 2 is equal to R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 times applied voltage. So, I will, I will write that equation on this side. So, what would be my V g now? V g would be R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 okay, resistance divided by sum of resistances multiplied by the applied voltage or the overall voltage across these two which is V d d. Okay. So, E is not R 2 given to me, E is not R 1 given to me, E is not V d d known to me. So, now I know all these values, all these are known to me. So, applying or substituting those values in this equation, we are going to get the value of V g as 15 volts. Okay? We are going to get the value of V g as 15 volts. So, now that we got the value of V g as 15 volts, we can go ahead and put that volt 15 over here and rewrite the entire equation, which gives us to the most important DC load line equation. So, putting this value of V g here, I will rewrite this equation as V g s is equal to V g is 15 minus 500 times I d. This is a very important equation for me. Why? Because using this equation, I can now go ahead and plot my DC load line. How to plot the DC load line? All I have to do is make V g s equal to 0 find I d and vice versa make I d equal to 0 and find V g s. So, let us do the first thing whenever V g s is 0 what is going to be the current. So, if V g s is 0 what does this equation reduce to 0 is equal to 15 minus 500 I d or I d becomes 15 upon 500 that is essentially if you if you, if you do the back end calculation that comes out to be 30 milli amperes. Right? You have to do the math over bit, a bit over here, 15 upon 500 would be 30 milli amperes. So, therefore, I can say I d here is 30 milli amperes. Now, can you plot this coordinate onto the board or onto the graph? Whenever V j c 0 means what? I am here. When V j c 0, I am getting an I d of 30 milli amperes means this is going to be my coordinate which I can write as 0 which is x coordinate comma 30 milli ampere. Similarly, if I have to find another point on the x axis, what is 0 on the x axis? Your I d is 0. So, go back to this equation put I d equal to 0. So, what will be left now? If I d is 0 this term is going. So, you are going to be left with V g s as 15 volts. So, V j s 15 is the second coordinate here and this is the point where x axis is 15 volts, y axis is 0 milli amperes. There is no milli ampere as such, but just trying to say that there is no current. So, now I got the two points for this load line. So, what is the line which represents this equation? This is a load line equation, right? So, if you simply join these two, that is going to give me the DC load line, right? It really sounds very interesting. It is a very simple equation by which we can 
draw the transfer first, draw the DC load line, wherever these two intersect that is my Q point. Now, can, can we tell the Q point from this? We can't calculate, but we can definitely observe from the graph. How to observe from the graph? All you have to do is find what is the coordinate here, go back here and find the coordinate here. So, if your scales are correct, if your graph is correct and if your values are right, you should be getting the value of this Q point as 9.4 volts, 9.4 volts and 11 milli ampere. Okay, that means, x would be 9.4, even with a graph as poor as mine, I still got it as very much close to 10. So, this would be 9.4 and this would be around 11, though I got it at around 12. Use proper graph technique, you should get 11 milliampere. So, with this what we have got now, have we got the Q point? I have got VGS, but what does the Q point mean? The Q point means I do not need VGS, I also need what is your VDS. So, is finding VDS difficult? Absolutely not. We can straight away write the output equation using KVL and find out what is that value of VDS. So, what is the expression for VDS now? I will go back and write here applying Kirchhoff's voltage law to the output loop. So, what is the output loop? VDD, okay, I will write here, I will come on that side and let us see it will be more easy to explain. VDD okay, minus this voltage drop IDRD okay, minus this drop VDS. Finally, the last drop which is ID times RS, ID times RS is equal to 0. Okay. So, you can, you can rearrange this and solve for VDS. So, how does that do? You put VDS on one side, you will have VDS becoming equal to VDD minus, now ID is common between these two terms, you can write ID outside, since minus has also come outside, you can write it as RD plus RS is equal to 0. Right? So, this is the equation we got by writing the KVL for the output loop. Once you do that, can we solve? Yes, we can. VDD is known to us. ID has been just now calculated as 11 milliampere's. RD and RS are already given to us. So, using this, we can find out the value of VDS. So, if you do the back end calculation or the back end maths, a simple calculations there, you are going to get the value of VDS Q as 7.5 volts. Okay? So, so, you solve for this, you are going to get 7.5 volts. That becomes your final Q point. So, what is the Q point then? The Q point is VDS Q is 7.5 volts, ID Q is 11 milliampere. So, if I were to write the answer somewhere here, I, I used to I use this space and I will write it here as Q point for this particular circuit using the graphical technique as okay, VDS Q comma I D Q, which happens to be 7.5 volts and 11 milli ampere. Okay. So, this is another way in which you can actually find out the Q point using the graphical tool. In real world scenario, you do not have to use a graph tools, you have tools which can computer tools or ECAT tools which can compute this and find out the appropriate values for it. So, now coming back to our flow in which we are trying to present here. So, we have done the presentation here so far, we have seen the techniques for biasing the enhancement MOSFET. So, can you now finally summarize what is it that we have done in this entire session. So, we started by designing the biasing circuits for enhancement MOSFET devices using what we call as a feedback bias technique. So, what was feedback bias technique? It just used one power supply instead of two power supplies. You just take VDD, take a feedback from the drain and give it back to the gate. So, I do not have to have a separate voltage source at the gate. So, much much simpler circuit and much much more stable than a self bias. Then of course, we had the most commonly and most widely used techniques which is called as a voltage divider bias. Voltage divider bias technique 
Again, we solved some two, one or two examples for both of these cases and found out the Q point. Not only that, we also saw how we can use the load line technique and the graphical techniques to determine the Q point. So, with that we come to the end of this particular session. Uh, in the next session, we will go beyond these devices and see where these devices are actually used. Right? So far, we have been studying or analyzing what is MOSFET, what is enhancement MOSFET, what is depletion MOSFET, what are the type of biasing circuits involved and so on and so forth. From now on, we will actually start using all this is fine. Can you tell me some applications where I actually go ahead and use these circuits. Right? So, that is it with that we will wrap up this particular session. Thank you.